Hi, I am Dr. P. S. Banerjee, President Elect Cardiological Society of India, former head of the Department of Cardiology, Medical College, Calcutta. So today I will discuss about hypertension and comorbidities. You all know that hypertension is a growing problem across the world. And as the people grow older, there is increased incidence of high blood pressure, which at all times defined as the recorded blood pressure 140 by 90 or above measured on three successive occasions. Now, there may be isolated systolic hypertension, particularly in the elderly, as because the age progresses, the atherosclerosis increases, and there is more chance of having systolic blood pressure raised as compared to the diastolic one. And as a result of that, the patient may have a blood pressure of 170 by 78 like that. Now, as the duration of the hypertension increases, there is also increased incidence of several comorbidities. One important being the obesity or metabolic syndrome, which is associated in about 40% cases of hypertension. There is the diabetes. As the duration of hypertension increases, the chances of diabetes also increases, and it is associated in 20% cases of hypertension. Coming to the dyslipidemia, it is also present in about 20% cases of hypertension. Hyperuricemia present in 25% cases of hypertension. Now, if the hypertension is not controlled at the onset, and that results in target organ damage, mainly affecting the fundus or eyes, the heart, kidney, and the peripheral arteries. So thereby, since the hypertension remains silent in most of the situations, so you have to be very careful to record the blood pressure in time and detect it and treat it in a very diligent manner so that the blood pressure can come in the range of 130 by 80 or less. Now, patients who are having hypertension in the family history like parents, brother or sister should be more careful and should record their blood pressure at least twice a year. And whenever the hypertension is first detected, you have to do the basic investigation to note about the damage of the any target organ. So a fundus examination, urine routine and albumin detection, ECG, echocardiography, and palpation of all the peripheral pulses are very important so that you can at least know that patient does not have any damage to the target organ. And if the patient is having only hypertension, which is most of the situations idiopathic in nature, in 95% of the cases, in that situation, the first and the foremost thing is the lifestyle modification. And as the patient loses body weight by daily at least 30 minutes brisk walking, so one kg reduction of the body weight can reduce the systolic blood pressure by five to seven millimeter of market. So thereby lifestyle modification is the first therapy should be continued for at least three months, provided that the patient do not have any target organ damage. When there is any target organ damage at the time of diagnosis, then you should start pharmacological therapy along with the lifestyle modification. But if the patient does not show any reduction in the blood pressure after lifestyle modification and patient is not having any medicines for reducing the blood pressure, then after three months, you should now start giving the pharmacotherapy. And in the medicine treatment of high blood pressure, the three most common drugs being used is a diuretic like thiazide or thiazide analog, calcium channel blocker, ACE inhibitor or ARB. They can be combined together to bring the blood pressure around 130 by 80 millimeter mercury or less. Beta blocker is not the first drug of choice unless the patient has got hypertension with coronary artery disease or acute coronary syndrome, or the patient has got hypertension with heart failure, in which case you can start with the beta blocker and other antihypertensive medicines. Now, when the patient has got diabetes with hypertension, then the drug of choice is definitely the ACE inhibitor or ARB. 
and along with that you can add beta blocker and if the blood pressure is not controlled then you can add calcium channel blocker and the when patient has got dyslipidemia with hypertension then you must give the statin which will help to reduce the target ldl level below 70 mm 70 mg per cent and lower is always better so you should remember that if it is even around 55 mg per cent ldl level that is much better because lower is the better besides that if the patient has got any damage to the kidneys and this is a very critical situation where hypertension can lead to chronic kidney disease or chronic kidney disease can lead to high blood pressure and in that situation there are several drugs which can be used like calcium blockers diuretic and in the initial phase arb or ac inhibitor if they do not show any adequate response or if there is a rise in the serum potassium or the creatinine level with the addition of arb or ac inhibitor then you should stop that otherwise you can give a combination of the calcium blocker diuretics beta blockers and hydrolysis hyperuricemia if associated with hypertension then you can use the medicines for reducing the uric acid level so thereby comorbidities is often associated with high blood pressure and so at the onset of diagnosis you must search for any associated comorbidities metabolic syndrome is another associated problem with hypertension and most of the patients have shown to have obesity as the hypertension duration increases so in their case there is also associated dyslipidemia some patient may have associated obstructive sleep apnea so in that situation of metabolic syndrome reduction of the body weight is very important so by using the dash eating diet that is avoiding the saturated fat eating more vegetables fruits and salads and doing regular 30 minutes brisk walking you can go for the lifestyle modification and that helps in reduction of the body weight and helps to control the blood pressure so in controlling the blood pressure the associated comorbidities must be looked for and they should be treated appropriately besides the lifestyle modification and pharmacological treatment when the lifestyle modification alone fails to control the blood pressure at 138 by 80 mm mercury or less so hypertension is a continuous process it is treatable controllable but it is not curable so that is why it should be diagnosed early because most of the patient may be in asymptomatic and so high index of suspicion is required and when you diagnose hypertension you should start doing the proper management so as to prevent the target organ damage thank you for your patience hearing